Getting into content creation can be very difficult, especially when it comes to video editing. You know, you get into even these free offerings like DaVinci Resolve, the learning curve is very steep. And let's just face it, it's very hard for people to get into and a lot of people just don't want to deal with it. They like something easy. Well, today I want to show you something that I think will make it easier for you to create your videos on YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, long form, short form formats that will give you what you need. And it's very easy and it is free. And that is Oslo.io by Streamlabs. I thank you Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. And what I'd like to do today is show you Oslo.io and show you how it's used because not only is it a video editor, it is a collaboration tool where you can invite people to come in and look at your video and give you some comments and feedback on how you can make it better. Now let's go ahead and get into Oslo.io and let's see what it can do for you. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Oslo.io. Very easy to get to. And then once you get there, you got two options. You can either log in if you've already made an account, or if you're brand new, like most of you probably are, then you need to make an account, give it an email address, all the normal stuff, and then you log in. Or you do like me, and you go to the login, select your account. I'm using my Google account for my YouTube page and then you log in and that will get you to the launch page where you can then do either video editing or collaboration with other people who have made a video that you want to look at or they can look at your video. Launch page is very easy, very uh, simple to understand. And that is probably one of the best things I like about this is that it is very intuitive. All right, so now let's take a deep dive into Oslo.io's video editing function itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a video sequence. Now I have made one, this is a little unboxing kind of video that I made. It's just a real quick sequence, just to show you what you could do inside of Oslo. So we'll go ahead now and we'll just click on the uh, project here and it will open it up. Now you can see here a very intuitive interface that allows you to you know, quickly build a sequence. Now I did this in about 10 minutes. It, and that includes everything other than uploading the video itself to the cloud, or that does take time depending on your internet speed. But you see here, I have different things here, whether it be settings, and you can see this is where you would change your uh, settings for your different social medias. So for YouTube, and then you have portrait for TikTok and YouTube shorts, and then you have square for Instagram and Facebook. You have media sources here. Now these are where you can upload your different files, whether it's uh, MP4s. Just real quick to let you know, I did talk to the developers about this. So right now, this only supports H.264 files. So anything that needs an alpha transparency like Apple ProRes, something like that where you need a transparency for like say a lower third something of that nature uh, unfortunately you will not be able to use that only h264 is supported right now now they are planning to add a bunch of different assets where you can make lower thirds and things like that in the future let's just give you a heads up so here we have all the files that I have uploaded to use for this sequence. And here you see a number of tracks. Now you're not really limited from what I can tell uh, by the number of tracks that you can make with this account. Now this is the free account that I'm using. So you can see here, I've got uh, four tracks here and I've had as many as like eight because what you do is when you add a media file, whether it's an audio, a video, a graphic of that nature, uh, it automatically makes a new track for you. So just keep that in mind. But here I have four tracks that you can see. I have a main video track and you can see here I've made some different uh, cuts here and made some transitions. I've got an audio file for music and I've got a title slide right here. And I will go ahead and play this and you can kind of see what it's doing. So pretty simple, nice little quick, you know, way to make a video sequence here. Uh, now you have some options here. You have an undo and a redo. Here you have your split here where you can make your cuts to your video or audio. Uh, you also have a toggle timeline snap and toggle canvas snap. You have your play functions here for your media, for your timeline, and you can also zoom in or zoom out on your timeline. So it's very simple and easy to understand. You've also got sounds here that are built in, or these are like little five second clips like you can use for 
like transitions or some little effect if you want to. You've got all kinds of different transitions available that you can see here that you can use in your video sequence. You have text here, which has a number of fonts from, uh, it looks like the Google fonts that you can use within your, your sequence here. And this is for making different titles. Uh, you also have a number of filters that you can add to your uh, video for different effects. And then of course here you got comments for the collaboration piece of it. Now the media here, let me show you. There is some options you can do here. You can click this. You can add some animations for this to fade in and out if you want to. You can also adjust the speed here. Uh, you have a couple different options from half speed to 1x speed, which is your normal speed, one and a half, 2x. And then you can also do a custom if you wanted to. The adjustment portion is really nice because this is where you can zoom in, you can rotate the video, and you can do some simple color correction with opacity, contrast, brightness, hue, and saturation. So you do have those options. And that's really nice for a free program like this. And again, it's very easy to understand. Also, if you don't like some settings that you've made, you can go to reset and it'll set it back to the default. So very, very nice, clean UI, I like this a lot. Now, this little function right down here, this is a transition. You can make a simple split and what I'll do is I'll hit the S key and that makes a split right there. And then this gives you this little button here, this little add. So this, you can add a transition to this and you have a number of options here that you can see, all right? And I say, let's do a bounce here. All right. Now, if you wanted to get rid of that transition again, you just right click on it and you can delete it. Or if you wanted to change it, you can update transition to one of the others in the list. Very simple. The split it, the split is really easy though. You can either use the scissors if, if that's what you want to do. Or for me, I like to just click on the timeline, hit the S key, and that will give you the cut there if you wanted to do that. So you can also bring in audio, whether it be an audio commentary that you're going to make for the video, or if you want to bring in music like this uh, Harris Heller clip that I downloaded from Stream Beat, and you could play that, but you heard it earlier. The only limitation you really have on this is storage. You get 1080p video at 30 frames per second, uh, but you are limited in your storage. If you go back, to your main page, you can see how much storage you have for the free account. And I have up to 15 gigabyte for storage as you can bring in, bring in these video clips and you can use as assets for all of your different videos. So that might be something you need to manage. Just keep that in mind, but not a huge deal. But overall, I think the video editing portion of this is actually pretty easy to understand. I do like the titles. Now this is a title I made right here. Now this is just simply going in and typing in whatever you want it to be called. We'll call it this just call 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 it a capture card unbox. All right. Type whatever you want. You can do different things again, like changing the font family. Now, one thing that I do like about this is it automatically changes the font size for you based on what you want to make it. So if I increase the size of the overall box, you will see that it will increase the font size to correspond with that. And that'll, that's nice because that'll keep it from distorting and looks, looking all boxy. You'll still have a nice smooth font to match the resolution that you want it to be. You can change the opacity, you can rotate it. You have full options for different color here. Uh, it's very nice. Now, if you go to the advanced tab with this title, you can change the background color, which you can see here, I've got this red. I also have a border color. You can have the border width. Now going left and right with your mouse, if you left click and hold that, that will allow you to change the size and you can see it changing there as necessary. Likewise, same thing with the border radius. You can make this a box if you wanted to. Say if I make it zero, I think it'll make it a box. Yeah. Or if I make it, uh, let's go to advance here and we will change the uh, border radius, say 29 or 20. And then you get this nice little rounded thing there. So you can make nice little titles here and you can add a, an animation to this if you wanted to. So what I've done down here is I've added a fade in and fade out. And here you can change the duration. Now for me, it's the, this, time or duration affects the fade in and then the fade out. It's not the total duration. So if you want a quick fade in and then the title shows and you want a quick fade out, then you want to use a one second. If you want a long fade in 
in fade out, then you're going to want to change this. And what, but what that'll do is it will shorten the time that the title box is actually displayed in full uh, opacity. So just keep that in mind. One other feature I wanted to show you is how you can separate audio from your video. So I'm going to take a clip right here. I'm going to add it to the timeline and then I'm going to right click. And then right here you have detach audio. Now I recommend you doing this at the get go if you want to do this. And that way you get a separate audio track. Now that's going to help you for if making audio cuts, taking out breaths, or if you want to make J cuts or L cuts, to give a little extra professionalism to your video. Now, if you wanna learn about J cuts and L cuts, there is a plethora of tutorials out there that teaches you the basics of J cuts and L cuts and what they do for your video. But you would be able to do this by detaching your audio and then you could see the spaces, you can see the areas where you need to make the associated cuts to do this. All right, the last thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to need to set up a collaboration if that's what you want to do for your video. So it's very easy to do. So right here on the front page, you need to go to the top here and you have a little plus sign for invite project members and you can type in someone's email send the invite and then what they'll do is the email will show up here under pending invites when they accept that you can then add them to collaborate and you know they can go in and they can comment on your videos and whatnot share files that sort of thing you can also select roles based on how you want them to be able to access your video that gives you great options for collaboration this is a great feature which i like a lot and once you do that and you go into your editor here you have a function down here for comments, and this is where you can see comments from the people that you're collaborating with, and they can give you feedback, which is very nice. You can also, under collaboration, do a number of things, including file requests, review links, and you, again, have the chat here where you can talk to, your, to whoever you need to talk to within your group. All right, so the last thing we really need to do now is export your video that you have created. So. You'll go under the video editing function and then at the upper right hand corner, you will click the export button. There you will name the title of the video. And you can also publish this to YouTube when it exported. Now you have to have your account attached to that or you can just export normal. And by clicking so, what it'll do is it'll tell you the estimated time and it will actually send you an email once it's done. Now you can close your browser, you can go do whatever you need to do. Now, once your export is complete, you should get an email where you can then go and view the file, which will then bring up a playback where you can look and view your video, see everything there. And you also have the comments from people who are collaborating with you. Or if you wanted to find your exports, you can also go into the UI, go to exported videos, and then you will see your video also there. So that is how you can get your export ready so that you can then publish it to YouTube or wherever you want to do, or you can just download it as a raw file to your PC. Well, that is it for the video. Again, thank you Streamlabs for giving me the opportunity to make this tutorial on oslo.io i do appreciate it listen if you are new to content creation this is a great way to get your feet wet get into making videos it is a lot easier to use than some of these more sophisticated and difficult to use programs this will get you into video editing and help you get a basic understanding so that when you are ready to go beyond and you can get into these more difficult pieces of software but this gives you all the tools that you need to get started and to create some pretty good videos in my opinion again guys thank you very much for watching hope you have a great day make sure you hit like and subscribe to the channel if you like this content i would love to see you come back thank you everybody for watching i do appreciate it have a great day we'll see you later